Hey everyone, now that you know the basic requirements for essay number one, I think it's a good opportunity for me to introduce the topics and let you know exactly what I am looking for in this essay. I gave you a total of five topics, um, and the first step, okay, before you, you select any topic at all, is to choose a story that you are going to focus on. The story is going to be your primary source. So if I decide that I would like to do my essay on the open boat, then my, my entire focus is going to be on the open boat. The secondary source is another story from this list that you are going to make a brief connection to. When I say brief, I mean like in one body paragraph. It's not going to be the main focus of your essay. The main focus of your essay is going to be on that primary story that you are ch choosing to um, write your essay on. So I'm going to give you guys specific examples as I go through each topic. Please make sure you're paying attention because I go over everything that I am looking for when it comes to a given topic. So topic number one, you're going to see that it has the most explanation written down because this happens to be one of the most um, popular topics that students select. It's a character analysis. So the first step is to choose one character from any of the stories we've read in this unit and to write a character analysis on that person. Now, um, the character can be you know, whether a minor or a major character. Um, and when I say minor, it could be like, you know, a character that doesn't even have a name. The narrator from, from the telltale heart could be a character that you're analyzing. Or it could be a major character like, like Eliza Allen from Chrysanthemums. So um, it doesn't matter, you know, how, uh, how big this character is, like, in the story, you know, it doesn't matter how long the story is, your focus can be on a representation of that character. But it's not just describing the character, that's not the purpose of a character analysis. So let me clarify, a strong character analysis should provide both an understanding and evaluation of this character. So what does that mean? An evaluation is a judgment on the character. That means that you are taking a position on the character, whether you are sympathizing with this person or condemning this person. Now, I could write an entire essay um, sympathizing with the narrator from the Telltale Heart. Despite the fact that he kills someone, I could represent him in a specific way throughout my essay. Um, it's my thesis. I could do what I want. So, so when I say evaluation of the character, that's really what I'm talking about. I want you to take a position. Either you are defending this character or you are criticizing this character throughout your essay. So in your analysis, you are trying to make a connection to another character from another story in our unit. So if my goal is to you know, represent the narrator from the telltale heart, and I'm going to be representing the, the narrator in a, in a sympathetic way, I could make a connection in one of my body paragraphs to, let's say, uh, the misfit from a good man's heart to find. Just because, you know, I want to kind of keep it in the, in the same um, ballpark, you know, since the, the narrator from the telltale heart kills the person and so does the misfit, and there is a connection there that could be made. Um, and I'm going to be maybe drawing emphasis on that connection in my body paragraph. Now look, a good character analysis is going to be a specific character analysis. What do I mean by that? You could focus on any one of these things um, in your analysis. So any one of these questions, okay? Any one of these um, really like these character uh, traits or representations that could be the whole focus of your essay. Does the character undergo important changes? You could ask yourself that question and 
formulated thesis. What are the facets of this character's personality or behavior? Um, you could focus on, the, on their personality if that's what you think is significant in the story. What is this character's relationship with other characters? Sometimes we learn more about people by observing how they interact with other people. So you could do that. What important actions does this character take that helps us understand him or her better? Or what important conflict does this character encounter? And how does he or she address or resolve those conflicts? So look, any one of these could be a rationale in your thesis. I wanted to give you guys an example. Here is my thesis, okay? And this is just a thesis I came up with. It's, it's a pretty lengthy thesis. It's kind of like, like a half of my introduction. But I did want to, um, you know, introduce the character first and then uh, make sure that I took a position on the character and also make sure that I showed my audience what my rationales are going to be. So here goes. The character of Arnold Friend from Query Boy and Where Have You Been by Joe Carol Oates is a fascinating glimpse into the inner workings of a serial killer. That is really my context sentence. Because that's my opening sentence. I'm introducing the character in a general way. Despite the fact that he never grows, improves, or changes throughout the story, readers are still able to learn about his deeply rooted insecurity, demonstrated by the details devoted to his appearance, as well as his desperate desire for control reflected in his speech towards Connie. Though we cannot sympathize with him, we do learn to understand him a little better by the conclusion of the story. So notice that I am taking a position. I'm not sympathizing with this character. I am criticizing, I'm condemning this character. But I am trying to show a little bit of understanding like uh, for why he is the way he is. And the two main rationales that I'm going to be developing are his insecurities. You know, this is a big personality trait that I think uh, is important to discuss. And the second is his desire for control, and we see this a lot in his speech, even like from the very beginning and in, in the first dialogue that we come across, gonna get you baby, <laughs> that's already reflected um, in him. So I only have two rationales in my essay. The more focused I am, the better my essay is gonna be. It's very specific. I know what my position is. I know where I'm going with my essay. And this is, you know, just a, a, a sample thesis to get the wheels turning. Topic number two is on symbolism. Now, I wrote over here, analyze the symbolism in one of the stories we read or watched um, and, and how that symbolism develops a particular theme in the, um, I'm sorry, I could play, but it could be uh, story in general. So, okay, symbolism, right? What exactly is it? It could be an object, it could be a fact, and it's supposed to have a meaningful representation of something else, of an idea, of an important idea in the story. So if you're going to be choosing a symbol, you better be really specific on what symbol you are choosing. So I wanted to give you guys a suggestion. Um, let's say if you would like to focus on the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind, you might want to analyze the symbolism of colors in that story. By the way, another story that uses colors as symbolism is the open boat or the yellow wallpaper. There's so much symbolism throughout these stories. Even you could look at a and as being a symbol. Um, there's, a, there's a lot, okay, so there's a lot of like also devil symbolism and where it's going, where have you been. Um, you're going to notice like the devil imagery. Um, I studied this actually in my essay when I was in college was on um, the symbolism of uh, like Satan, of the devil uh, throughout the story. If you're interested in that, you definitely can focus on that. So pretty much I wanted to keep this broad so that you guys can select the symbols that interest you 
in a particular story. So here is an example. I wanted to give you guys another sample thesis, and I chose trifles as the story that I'm going to focus on. The symbolism of the messy kitchen, sorry for the typo, such as the dirty towels and broken jars, reflects the heartbreaking theme of despair reflected by Minnie Wright's mental breakdown. So notice that I'm choosing um, you know, two specific symbols to focus on. The broad symbol is the messy kitchen, but the specific symbols are the dirty towels and the broken jars. Um, and I, I would like to discuss that, you know, the more focused I am, the better off my essay will be. And I am going to make a connection uh, to another story. And you know, since I am talking about this theme of despair, I thought, why not, you know, why not make a connection to the yellow wallpaper, which also shares a theme of despair, a doll's house, which also shares a similar theme. Or even chrysanthemums, you know, like to some extent, Eliza Allen um, can be comparable to many Wright as well. So I just want to show you guys you know, how you can take a broad topic like this and, and make it a little bit more specific. Your third option, um, irony. <laughs> Analyze the irony in one of the stories from our unit and how it leads to a deeper understanding of a particular character or theme. So irony exists in, in essentially every single story that we've read. So you can, you can find irony in the open boat, the fact that you know, there is these struggling men who are so close to shore and yet they cannot get to land. There's a lot of irony in, uh, in, a tri in trifles, there's tons of irony in reality bites, in a good man is hard to find. Um, even in cathedral, the fact that you know the blind man sees so much more clearly than, than the man that has actual vision. Um, there's a lot of irony in these stories. So I wanted to again make this a little bit more general and have you choose one story to focus on and in particular look at the irony in that story. So. I decided to give you guys an example. I chose a good man is hard to find as, let's say, the main story that I'm going to be focusing on. And here is a step, sample thesis. The greatest irony in the short story, A Good Man is Hard to Find by Flannery O'Connor, is that the only person who seems to truly understand Christian virtue happens to be a serial killer. In reality, the misfit is the only character in the story who is not a hypocrite despite his evil nature. So I, I thought this was a very interesting approach because Christianity is, is such a big element in the story. And you know, there we have the grandmother who considers herself like this proper Christian lady, and yet there are there's so much evidence of her being hypocritical to a lot of those Christian values. But then there's the misfit who just comes along and does not have that same hypocrisy. So in my essay, I am going to make a connection to another story. And I was just thinking that if I were going to write this essay, I might want to make a little contrast between the misfit and Arnold's friend from where are you going, where have you been? Despite the fact that both men are serial killers, I think the misfit is a lot more genuine. He does not have as much hypocrisy as Arnold Friend does. Arnold Friend is desperate to assimilate, to be accepted. He's trying to fit into society, whereas the misfit doesn't really care to fit into society. Um, it's kind of like he's given up. He, he thinks you know society is bullshit. <laughs> but Arnold Friend is still trying to like show this appearance of being like this normal person in society. So I thought if I were going to make a connection to one of the other stories, maybe I would choose Arnold Friend from Where Are You Going and Where Have You Been. Okay, topic number four. Now, if you guys decided that you uh, wanted to focus on any one of the films, um, 
then four and five are really the one, the questions that are directed at the film. So they're a little bit more specific, okay? Number four is on reality bites. And there's three uh, topics in reality bites that you can potentially write about. Topic one is the way that reality bites depicts Generation X. So Generation X is this, you know, kind of like the Millennials or Gen Z. Gen X is, is um, a specific generation that targets like the 90s kids. You know, the, the ones that were like, um, that, that were adults, like in their 20-somethings in the 90s. So you might want to start off, if you're interested in writing this essay, in looking up Generation X. Like learn more about it. Like what was this generation? What was happening in society at this time? You know, we are talking about the 90s, so we do have to learn a little bit more about what's going on during that time period. And ultimately, the question that you would be answering is, do you agree or disagree with the film's portrayal of this particular generation? In other words, do you think the film represents this subject, you know, the subject of Generation X, accurately? So it, again, if you are interested in Gen X, then your essay will be on Gen X and its representation in reality bites. If not, you could also look at the topic of reality TV. So then the same question of, applies. Analyze the way reality bites depicts reality TV. So do you think that the movie is representing reality TV in an accurate way? Like, is it a trustworthy way? Um, this was really the birth of reality shows. If you notice, and when you do your research, you'll realize that it's during this Gen X time period that reality shows like the real world came out. Um, nowadays, our society has so many reality shows, right? We have rea reality shows on, on romance, on on just surviving, there's so much, you know, like the housewives of this and that. Um, but back then, it was just barely uh, coming out. You know, it was barely this like, you know, popular type of TV. So how does the movie represent reality TV? Do you think it's a trustworthy representation? Or the third topic are analyze the way reality bites depict the struggles of post-college graduates. So let me just explain, okay? Um, this is a, a movie about a group of friends after they graduate college. And if you want to write on that topic, so what I wrote here is you might want to first select a few conflicts that the film addresses. So what are some of these conflicts and, uh, you know, how does it kind of get represented in the movie? Um, if you want, here's a sample thesis to think about. Reality Bites offers a compellingly accurate commentary on the struggle to obtain a meaningful career as well as the endless failure to find a long-lasting romantic partner in life that postgraduate space both in the film and in real life. So notice that I took a position by, by, by calling it compellingly accurate. So I think Reality Bites is doing a good job of representing the struggles of post-college graduates. And then the two main rationales that I'm going to focus on um, is this idea of finding a meaningful career and finding a, a meaningful partner in life. So, Three topics, all related to reality bites. You're not doing all of them. You're only doing one of them. Okay, so even though I put them all in question four, uh, because they're all connected to reality bites, um, your essay can be on any one of these. Okay, but not all. That's why I, I put or in bold. You're either writing your essay on Gen X, the way that it's represented in reality bites. You're writing your essay on reality TV, the way that it's represented in the movie, or you're writing your essay on the struggles of, of post-college grads. Um, not all of them, just one of them. And finally, the last topic is on the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind and what its 
said about memory. So that's the theme that I would like to focus on. So I wrote over here, when analyzing the film, answer this question. Do memories define us or are they barriers to our future progress? So this is the ultimate question that the film asks, right? Because we learn that uh, many of these characters in the film, they undergo a memory erasing procedure. And uh, why do they do that? Because they think that these memories are, are a hindrance in their life. It's not letting them move on and be happy. So, you know, the question still remains by the end of the movie, like, did they do the right thing in erasing their memories? Some of us might say, and we might take the position, that there are some memories that if we could just forget those memories, we could be happier, okay? Like, we could do without some of these memories. Or we might argue that, no, you know, we need to keep every kind of memory that we have, whether positive or negative, because they somehow benefit us in our lives. So that's the position that you're taking, but the reasons for your position, that's really going to be the inspiration in your thesis. Now, this topic is meaningful to me just because the idea of memory um, holds just so much value in my life and my family's life. You know, I, I, my Alzheimer's runs in my family. I had a grandpa who died from it, a great grandma who died from it. My grandma is currently struggling with dementia. Um, and so memory is, is just like this, this thing that it weighs on my heart because I know how important it is. But at the same time, I think the film provides this meaningful commentary on, on you know, like the damage that certain memories can do in a person's life, but also the, the way that we can treasure certain memories in our lives. So this is a position essay. You know, we, we're not arguing both. We're only arguing one. So if you're interested in this topic uh, and in writing about this movie, I think that would be great. And once again, you are making a connection to another story in our unit. Um, but again, it's not your main focus. Your main focus on, is on the eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. I hope these, these topics are compelling for you. I hope they're getting your wheels turning <laughs> and that at least one of them inspires you to write a good essay. Um, if you guys have any questions at all, please feel free to reach out.